Okay, I'm going to be showing you these latches that are in the lungs. This is the latch. These tag body parts together transfer fluids. I think my, I might have explained that already. This is a meteorite. A little tiny meteorite. And it's also a lung. And it's turned into, you know, it's, it's, it's a metal iron meteorite. Now I'm going to show you this in a microscope. And these holes here, all these different holes, are from where the alveoli exploded out. It didn't, it didn't, they didn't cave in, they exploded out. Now, I, I, this is a terrestrial lung, and it just, all that stuff just washed out of it. This one exploded out. Now, I'll show you in the microscope right now. And I will show you this latch, which proves to me this is a lung. This is that little... Um, iron meteorite lung. And these are all the little alveoli. I'm going to put it in the microscope and show you. And that just shows you that this it's, it's, um, it's iron. It easily holds on to magnets. This is that little magnetic meteorite which is a lung. These are the alveoli right here. These are the, these are, they're all just blown out. You see from being hot inside there and blowing out. That didn't just erode down. Now, you see over here? Let me tune this in, hold on. Right over there is the fabric of the, the um, pleura. You see the little fibers? It mostly burnt off. There's areas where it's still pretty good, you can see it, but that's that those are the fibers of the pleura on the lung. I've shown this many, 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 many times. And these are all the little alveoli holes that exploded as it came through and started to smelt. Smelting means it turning into metal and burning off all the garbage. As you can see, the the pleura is around here. Now I'm gonna show you that latch. You see all these little holes? That's where air normally would be. All right, there's the latch at the bottom of the lung that I just showed you. See all the, this is the one, the meteorite lung. That is the latch. Now I'm gonna try to get, it's, I think I can see the two little end dimples there, but that that is the latch. Now I'm quite a ways off it, so I can come down a little further. You see? And right up here is the the oop, is the pleura, which you can still see some of the little fabric in the pleura, and then that latch starts. And this, you see how it's a totally different substance? It's like a different material. Same thing with the other one, a little bitty one I showed you that had that little tab on the bottom. It was just a different substance. Now I'm going to see if I can get down there. I don't know if I will or not, but this, this, there's no question this is a lung. The fabric is there, which is the pleura and the fibers. The latch is there. All of the alveoli are there. And there's still, I believe, viable blood in this. No, right, coming through space, it's it's hot, and it, everything roasted off, but you it, it turned black basically where the red blood was, and but the blood is still coming out all over the place from these alveoli. Now you can see some of the little fabric still left in here. There's virtually no question that this is that fabric. You see that fabric? See little white pieces in there? That's exactly like this. Alright, I showed you 
the alveoli exploded, all these little round holes. This is the fabric, which is the pleura. These little white fibers are infused in that fabric. And this right here is a lung that was DNA tested and CAT scanned. It's exactly the same stuff. And here's one that was stripped down. I have been every single, I have had ones that are half stripped off and half full, completely stripped off. And as you can see, the meteorite lung. I showed you the latch. I showed you the alveoli. I showed you the pleura. The shape of it, everything there is, is, <clears throat> and the blood is in these holes. And, and, and I'm sure that could be tested. I'm almost certain there's blood if you drilled in there. All right, this is a shot here of just the surface and over into some good sized alveoli. Now, we're mud fossil people. We understand the black, we understand the red, we understand the fibers, we understand the colors, the yellow. Now, over here is a pretty good sized cavity which it originally blew out from being roasted in space. All these did. Here's the fabric again. Now, I just put a little water in there. You can see how quickly it rehydrates. All these are tubes going in. Now, I could stir up some blood here if I wanted to. Probably right there in that little hole. I mean, I can stir it up anywhere. These things are just saturated with blood. Hold on a second. Okay, watch this. I'm just digging around a little bit. Watch what comes out of there. Wow, this is hard to do and keep it. Now, I'll put a little water in that cavity. And we got blood. See that? Look. There's blood. All you gotta do is put a little water in there. Now, to get a sample out of this, you certainly would not swab it from the surface. You would drill down into it and take a sample from down inside where it's not contaminated. And it doesn't have to be wet and bloody, it just has to be a good clean sample. It, it totally very, very, very simple to do. And oh, you contaminated, you did this, you did that. They didn't examine it, and it, they're free to be tested. That, my friends, is that right there, which is this little meteorite. And I said, they, they all have blood in them. If you look carefully, all you got to do is look and see, look at meteorites. They all have blood in them. Well, the ones I've seen do. And that's this meteorite. And there's that latch that was in here that I showed you. And it's magnetic. There's no denying that. It has the same fabric, everything. Okay, this is also an iron meteorite. 
and it's it's bigger and it completely melted and smelted into a ball and there's no cavities no holes in here that would not happen if it was a lung this is not a lung I believe this was probably a heart possibly a liver but it's got to be where there's a, a, a complete density of blood because that's what creates the metals the metals are blood virtually all the metals are in your blood and iron is, is saturated with iron that's why they become magnetic because they turn into iron and smelting is heating and burning off all of the residue and ending up with the heavier stuff which happens to be the metals and that's what happens as it comes through space and it blows out all through these cavities and that's why this isn't just one complete little ball of metal it's first of all it's too small to get hot enough and secondly lungs just don't do that even the biggest lungs there is the William Met meteorite is a lung and it's still got all these cavities in there so let me show you a couple more things about lungs they could preserve on earth just as well that's a lung right there Gary Evans found this over in England in a mud bog he saw these stones and I think something caught his eye and he opened it up and here's all the lung tubing and um, you see how it's, it's stone on the outside but when you break them on the inside you end up with tubing and then he saturated the whole thing and here it is right here these are that's that's this stuff right here inside the lung that's this stuff right here now the black is the uh, artery blood and this vein is the uh, I mean the black is the vein blood the red is the artery blood and this is a lung and that's all where all the tubing goes just like this now after this dried out getting out of the mud conditions it just turned into dust and here it is after it dried out this was only like two weeks later there it is and it's just you could just dust it right off but these are all the little alveoli holes uh, and once it, it dries out it's done now other ones hardened up now it seems to be in the salt water conditions they didn't stay together like they did in the fresh water conditions in the salt waters they seem to well dissolve more well everything I have is in fresh water conditions here in Connecticut now look at this you see that that's called the Williamette meteorite these kids are sitting in here that my friends is a lung oh come on Roger yes it's a lung and I'll show you another shot that adds a lot of substance to it but you can see the size of it and these are the same as this everything cooked off now there's certain ways things can come through the ionosphere the ionosphere is the place where all the heat is now they can come straight through or they can come with it and stay in there for a while if they stay in there for a while this is what happens they don't fall into a million pieces they stay together they just cook but they come in with the rotation of the earth and with the ionosphere and it's just the right time everything and then it would cook like that otherwise they just blow into gigantic pieces and chunks everybody's seen where they show a meteorite coming in and phew, well it's coming in too hard too hot and anyway this would come in in a certain way where it would just cook and vaporize and that's the end result is just iron see there's that meteorite again that's called the Williamette meteorite and they took it from the Indians who was one of their sacred objects right there is a blood vessel and I'll show it to you it's very very clear now before it was laying on the side and the kids were sitting in here it's on display here now that again that's the blood vessel let me show you well you can't really miss it I mean you just it's right there it's red and it's bloody and everything else 
And I have another shot of it really right up close. I don't know if it's making any clearer. It looks pretty clear to me. Here it is right up here. And that's inside one of these cavities. It's a, it's a, a lung. Of that there is just no question. And it, that could be tested. If you drilled inside there and got deep enough inside, you'd be into something fresh. And there'd be something there you could at least see something. Okay, don't forget, this is what this looks like. Now just think of that as a landscape of a mountain. Well, you don't have to think because here it is, right here. This is the tubing that is in the lung. All that tubing is just like this here. And so all down here and then all of the fleshy stuff eroded away and the pipes. Those are the tubes sticking up that carried the oxygen around. You see? It's the same as these tubes here. If everything eroded away, those things, little nubbins would be sticking up. And if it was big enough to be the side of a, of a mountain, it would be. And these things were that big. The creatures were that big. It's just a natural fact. There's not much you can do about it. And this right here is skin cells. Those are skin cells. You see those blocks? This is a guy standing on it. These are skin cells. There were giants in the earth, which is the giants are the earth in those days. And then after that, there was more giants. These are the ones that made the earth. And every single culture on earth, 100%, had the same story that there was giant creatures cut up. They used their body parts. I mean, every one of them had that same story of they were all different, but they all had the same sort of story. But I know biology, and I'm going to tell you right now, that is a skin cell. And there's tight junctions and loose junctions and heron junctions and desmonosomes and all kinds of things that we could see in here. This is the POV guy, and I would love to, to interact with him and have him really do some deep research onto this stuff. Because it, it, this is biology. I mean, you can't deny it. But you could, it would be fun to examine it into some extreme depth. Because I could tell right there, you see that? That's the difference between the tight junction at the top and the anhera junctions on the side and going down. And this layer right here is what is called slurpy. It's small leucine-rich proteins. And they line in between every one of these so they can slip like this and do this and that. Because that whole mat has to do all that kind of stuff. But it can't be penetrated. These are supposed to be tight junctions. See, it's right there. That's what he was, this guy was standing on, one of these little skin cells. And th these are the adheron tight junctions and the tight junctions and all, all the different little things that are inside of them. And he's right there standing there looking at them. Of course, he's about this tall. <laughs> it's, what am I going to say? <laughs> 